right, there's going to be 1.1 1 .1, uh, law of science. It's going to be part one. I'll split it up into two. Uh, this one, part one specifically, is about finding uh, missing sides of triangles. We'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Okay. First thing we're going to talk about is how to label a triangle. Okay. So uh, I've got any triangle here. It can be any shape, any size, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to label the corners, the angles, with capital letters. So capital A, capital B, capital C. Okay. Uh, I will almost always use capital A, B, and C. Um, I don't think there's any time I don't use A, B, and C. All right. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is how you label the sides. Sometimes uh, they label it different online than how it is for law of science. Okay. So um, how this is labeled, the angle and the side across from it are going to be related. Okay. In law of science, uh, and loss, cosines, which we'll get to eventually. This angle is related to this side. Okay, so this is capital B. I'm going to call this lowercase b. Okay, this is capital C. So this side here is going to be lowercase c. This is capital A. So this side opposite of it is going to be called lowercase a or little a, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do a ratio, right? Uh, there's a ratio of this side and this, excuse me, this angle on this side to this angle on this side and this angle on this side, okay? What that ratio is, is called the law of sine. It actually kind of pops up on your screen here, all right? So what I want you guys to do, copy this down. Copy this down. Uh, this is uh, usually how it's presented, sometimes presented as uh, three of them in a row next to each other. It's the same thing, right? It's just three things equal each other. All right, uh, so get the down one on what that means. Okay, now you got the down. Uh, we're going to talk about how uh, I can use that in this example. Okay, so let's say I have a problem and it said they want you to find lowercase c. Find lowercase c. All right, so they want you to find uh, the side length like lowercase c. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a ratio. Okay, I need to use this angle with this side. Okay, so I know this angle. I'm going to set this up uh, with sine of 30 degrees over sine of little c, excuse me, sine of the angle over the side. So just little c. All right, now I need to set that equal to something. All right, I'm going to set it equal to a different pair, either sine of capital B over B or sine of capital A over A. All right, it's going to be set up equal to a pair. Now, uh, the pair you choose should always be something uh, you have the most information about. So I have capital A, this is 40 degrees. I have lowercase a, this is 15. Whatever it, uh, units you want to call it, inches, that's fine. Inches, feet, miles, I don't care. All right, so I'm going to set this equal to sine of this angle, sine of 40. Sine of 40 degrees over the uh, side length, so 15. Okay, so uh, sine of 30 over C equals sine of 40 over 15. All right, uh, you can use this to solve any triangle as long as you have a certain setup. Uh, so, what you're going to do is get a calculator out. All right, now uh, if you have a graphing calculator, uh, I'd use that. If you don't, uh, I have, I'm going to put a link on your Google Classroom. It's going to have uh, the Desmos graphing calculator, and uh, that'll be uh, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what sine of 30 degrees and sine of 40 degrees is. Now, if you're using a graphing calculator, make sure you get a mode first and see that it's on degree and not radian. Okay, we'll talk about radians in a few chapters, uh, but for right now, make sure it's on degree because we're talking about degree. So uh, what I'm going to do is plug in sine. If you look on the calculator. All right, I have to do is hit in your angle, sine of 30 degrees, close the parentheses, press enter. Oops. Add a plus sign back. Okay, sine of 30 degrees, all right, that's going to be 0.5. You're not always going to get a nice number like this. You'll see that with sine of 40 degrees. So I'm going to get 0.5 over C is equal to sine of 40 over 15. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to find out. 40. So sine of 40 
plugin plus twenty eight. And I get point six four three. Okay, you can round it uh to thousand twice. Okay, so I would say sign of forty, that's point six four around to three over fifteen. Okay, from here I have a fraction equal to a fraction. I can cross multiply. I can just do uh, times C, divide that over, whatever you want. Uh, but I'm gonna cross multiply. So basically, I have uh, C times 0.643 is equal to uh, 0.5 times 15. Okay, so go from this. Uh, 0.5 times 15, that's going to be 7.5. So we can pause this right now. So I have 7.5 over here. So it'll be 0.643C, and then you get C by itself. So I'll divide both sides by 0 0.643. 0 0.643. Okay, so 7.5 divided by 0 0.643 is going to be C is equal to 11.66. Uh, yeah, that was good. Okay. So, uh, C is equal to 11.66. What does that mean? What does it mean for the graph? Okay, for the graph, that means this here, this side length, is 11.66 inches or miles or whatever. Uh, unit you want to use, right? So uh, it should make sense like that, right? So this is 40 degrees. This should be a little bit bigger than the 30 degree angle, right? So 40 is bigger than 30, so 15 should be bigger than this number, okay? Which is so we're uh, we'll talk about B later on, okay? For now, let's try another example. So come over here, a different triangle entirely, okay? So we got the triangle here. I go and copy it down. Uh, capital A, capital B, capital C. So that means I can fill in uh, what my lowercase uh, uh, letters are. Okay, so um, if this is capital A, what's across from it? So across from it is going to be this here. This will be lowercase a. Okay, uh, if you're ever not sure which side is across from it, I know sometimes it messes a few people up. Just this side doesn't touch. This side or this side, right? The angle across means it's not going to be touching angle B. So B, for example, is this over here because this side touches B and this side touches B. So this side is little b. Okay? C, C. Okay? Uh, if that helps you, that's fine too. Again, uh, they don't always have to call it little c. For example, they might call this in Khan Academy, they may call it instead of find C, they might say find A, B. That's just between these two angles. That's what they call this side length. Okay? Uh, Khan Academy will call it that. I'm using capital, uh, lowercase c still because it's for law of science and it's easier to do that. Okay? So I want to find lowercase c. I know I have to set up a ratio with its angle. Okay, so I can start setting this up. I'm going to say sine of capital C. Uh, excuse me, sine of capital C would be sine of 100, right? Sine of 100 over lowercase c is equal to, uh, I want to set up something that has a uh, ratio we're in place, right? I don't know capital B. I don't know uh, lowercase b right now, okay? So uh, I'm going to use capital A. I know the angle. Lowercase a, I know the sign, right? So I can set this up. Sine of 70 degrees over 130, the side length. Sine of the angle over side length. Okay? So uh, I'm going to cross multiply. Um, you can start the problem out. Just kind of say what sine of 100 degrees is. Maybe what sine of 100 is. And you know, point We'll be working with point nine or the line. Not going to be something, right? So here I'm just going to cross multiply. Okay, I'm going to say c times sine of seventy 
is equal to sine of 100 times 130. Okay, if you do it this way, be very careful to use the parentheses. This is either sine of 100 times 130. Without parentheses, you mess up your confidence. Okay, so uh, from here, I know that I want to get C by itself. So I'll divide both sides by sine of 70. Sine of 70 divided by sine of 70. Okay, nice thing is when you do it like this, this cancels out, so I get C is equal. To, that's a lowercase C, I just drew a thing for some reason. Uh, I have my answer, I only have to plug it into the calculator one time. Okay, so I can come here and go a numerator in parentheses, I'm gonna go sine of 100 in parentheses times 130. Okay, I'll do all that divided by sine of 130. Okay, when I do it over one step like that, I get my answer perfectly. Okay, so this will be 136.24. 136.24. That is this side length here. Okay, so I'm good there. One thing they can ask you though. Okay, and when they give you two angles like this, uh, it will be something you can always do. Okay, they can ask you, what is lowercase b, right? So up here I have a question, find lowercase b. So imagine they didn't ask you this at all, okay? I don't know, this is 136.24. I don't know anything about that side line, okay? They ask me, what's lowercase b? If I want to find this side, I have to know this angle, okay? Or I want to find the angle, I have to know that side. I don't have either here. So a lot of people might say, uh, they, you're screwed. You're not here, okay? The reason for that is something you gotta remember here, okay? And if you wanna even make a star and make a note of this, all triangles add to 180 degrees. All triangles add to 180 degrees. Doesn't matter what shape, size, anything, every single triangle, when you add the degrees up, they'll all add up to 180. So if this is 100, this 70 together to make 170. So this angle I have to know is 10 degrees. Okay, that angle is 10 degrees. So now I know capital B. I can find out what lowercase b is. Okay, so I know I want to find sine of capital B, so sine of 10 degrees over lowercase b. That's what I'm trying to find. Okay, is equal to sine of an angle over a uh, side length. Now, uh, I could do sine of 70 over 130 again. I did that in this example, that's fine. If you're doing something where you're solving the whole triangle, uh, I already know this is 136. I could do sine of 100 over 136. I'm not going to, because it's got decimals. It's not gonna be as accurate. I'm gonna use the easier numbers with sine of 70 degrees over 130. Okay, now just looking ahead, uh, thinking about this, this is 70 degrees, that's a wide angle, this is 130. This is 100 degrees, it's even bigger, this was 136. Okay, this is a small degree, this should be a much smaller number. Okay, uh, so can I keep that in mind? If you don't get a smaller number, you probably did something wrong, go back, double check your work. Okay, so uh, we'll start simplifying here. I'm going to cross multiply, so B times sine of 70 is equal to sine of 10 degrees times 130. Okay, I could simplify that, or I can get B by itself now by doing this. Divide both sides by sine of 70, get B by itself. This will give you a more accurate answer. Uh, and when it comes to like kind of casting, we have to put in a more accurate answer a lot of times, this will usually be better, okay? so. I'm gonna get lowercase b is equal to whatever I end up plugging in here. So, uh, start plugging it in. Okay, sine of 10 degrees, sine of 10 times 130. Okay, I'll get about 22.57, but divide that by sine of 70. So, uh, final answer here. 24. 
0.02. Okay, if you want to round that to 24, probably would be fine, but uh, know that it's not exactly 24. Okay, so 24.02, that means this. That means I pretty much solved the triangle. I pretty much I did solve the triangle. Okay, I know every side length, every angle, uh, when I only started with this, this, and this. Okay, so uh, law of science helps you find out uh, almost every way you can solve a triangle. There is also law of cosines, but we'll see that in a couple days. Tomorrow we'll look at uh, law of sines when you want to find an angle. Okay, we'll talk about inverses there. Okay, uh, no homework for this section. We'll have homework after part two. So, hope you guys took good notes.